Hello and welcome to another Top 10 Autos. This week our Top 10 looks at a necessary evil. Traffic wardens. No Ginny, MPVs, multi-purpose vehicles. Why are they evil? Well, it's just that people don't drive them for fun. You may as well paint the side with the words, Hello, I've got a family. You could be transporting members of a rugby team though, couldn't you? What, every day? No, MPVs are aimed at the family buyer, and the good news is that they're better and cheaper than ever. So let's count down our panel's choice of the top 10 full-sized MPVs. At number 10, we see Toyota's Picnic. Only taking up as much space in the garage as the Toyota Avensis family car, the Picnic comes with six individual seats, which can be moved backwards and forwards, or converted into picnic trays, or even if the mood takes you, a double bed. Performance is pretty good with the lively 2-litre engine borrowed from the RAV4, although it needs revving to get the best from it. There's also a turbo diesel option which produces 86 brake horsepower and 36 miles to the gallon. The cockpit is reasonably car-like, though occupants sit up higher, and the non-adjustable steering column will spoil the driving position for some. It's not a bad car, but there's better. Much better. At number 9, a vehicle you see used as a courtesy taxi in a posh hotel, the Mercedes V-Class. Plenty of space and luxurious armchairs inside, available in plush, soft leather. But hang on a sec, look beyond the glitz and you discover the V-Class is really just based on a van. Hence the V in V-Class, I suppose, Dave. You are right though, it's the same shape as those Merc Vito vans that you see everywhere. But what's wrong with going around in a van? It was okay for the A-Team, wasn't it? Yes, but things are more sophisticated these days. Ford didn't convert their transit van, did they? The little-known Tornio aside, they put cash and effort into the Galaxy project. the V-Class is that there's so much space inside, not just for the passengers to stretch out, but also for their luggage as well. The seats all have a three-point seat belt, and if you're feeling strong, you can heave them out as well. Talking of weight, the V-Class is almost a two-ton vehicle, so it's pretty sluggish with the 2.2-litre diesel under the bonnet. So don't expect any real enjoyment from driving this thing, especially when you have to ensure a van-like steering position for the driver. Mercedes have got a brand new people mover in the pipeline, but for now, if you need space and a prestigious badge, the V-Class has to be your choice, but not ours.
At number 8 in our top 10 of full-sized MPVs is the Peugeot 806. Also in at this position is the Citroen Synergy, known as the Evasion on the continent. Now the Citroen is basically the same model as the Peugeot, but with different trim. Now this is quite an old machine, in fact the first European people mover, and it hasn't been simply a van conversion. There's a good use of space inside the body, with the gear stick at a wacky angle on the dash giving you a flat floor in between the seats. Now this is very useful especially when you need to attend to kids at the back or for the front passenger to walk around the cabin with sweets. When you stopped, of course. Now what about seat choice? Well not everyone needs the maximum eight seats. You can choose seven or just five, leaving a huge storage area in the back. The engine choice is terrible though, just the 2 litre petrol plus the 110 brake horsepower diesel, which can actually do the job of shifting weight rather efficiently, but don't expect any sporty performance. But a good MPV is all about practicality, and the 806 Synergy and Ulysses offer endless well-designed storage areas and practical sliding doors for the back to help get in and out of those tight spaces. At number seven, a newcomer to the MPB arena from Korea. The Hyundai Trajet may have an unfortunate, or should we say tragic name, but Hyundai have obviously watched the early arrival offerings with interest and now have delivered their greatest hit of MPB features at a knockdown price. Well, that was the original theory. In practice, you get styling, which is a weird mix of all the others without generating any identity of its own. Now, whilst companies like Hyundai and Daewoo can't compete as strongly on design, innovation and styling, where they make up loads of points is on the equipment levels that you get on the vehicles. And this Trajet is no exception. The list is quite impressive. You get air conditioning, CD player, leather seats, cruise control. You can't argue, really. But if you want a lot of features at a great price, then the Hyundai will not disappoint. You get barrel loads of room inside, nice comfy seats, air con, electric everything, and it gives you everything a full-size seven-seater should offer. Plus it offers a powerful 2.7 engine which you'll need lugging a full load. Uh, what you'll get annoyed about owning a Trajet will be the fiddly way that the middle seats have to be raised to get the rear seats out. But on the flip side, that middle row slides to give variable leg space. So if you don't mind plodding along in a very bland looking vehicle, check number seven in our top ten of full-sized MPVs. At number six is a car that's been selling well for ages, now into its third generation. The Mitsubishi Space Wagon is slightly bigger than the first two versions and is better than ever. It seats seven and you can configure them in lots of different ways, but like most MPVs, there's little space for luggage when they're full of people. Sure, it's been around a long time, in fact, since 1991 in its current version, but it's a car that's really been forgotten in the world of MPVs. The likes of the Galaxy, the Espace, the Previa, all a lot bigger. But this car is worth considering, particularly on the price and also the fact that it's not as large as the other ones and unwieldy and difficult to drive. But it still has the ability to carry seven people. A good number six for this Mitsubishi, but find out our panel's top five. Join us after the break. Hello and welcome back to the top 10 full-size multi-purpose vehicles. OK, let's see what our number 5 MPV is then. At number 5, the granddaddy of Europe's MPVs, the Renault Espace. Now they were taking a risk with the Mark 1 Espace, but it has paid off, and this latest version has loads of new and useful features. But in doing so, they've bumped the price up into the executive car bracket. 
Inside, the seats are big and luxurious, and gadgets such as remote control CD systems are on the options list. The front seats can be turned around for those lay-by conferences we're all supposed to be having, and the back seats can be folded or taken out. At first glance, I can't make my mind up whether this thing is a very posh family, or maybe the businessman who needs to carry a lot of businessmen and women around with him or her. I don't know, but certainly luxury is the name of the game. We've got leather and alicantra on all the seats, and it's not like just the four seats in your family saloon either, because in here, there's hundreds of them, seven in fact. If you need even more space, choose the long wheelbase Grand Espace, where people and luggage can fit. Plus there are holes and storage areas for all your bits and pieces, and what must be the biggest glove box in the world. In the engine department, there are 2-litre petrol and 2.2-litre diesels, plus a very smooth but thirsty 3-litre V6 option. The Espace itself is actually quite light, thanks to the use of lightweight plastic body panels. The only gripes about the Espace is that the driving position is still awkward and the gearbox isn't as smooth as it could be. But it's still a winner and it's our number five. At number four, the new Toyota Previa, with the emphasis on the word new because the previous model really was a bit of a lumbering tub. This new model still gives you plenty of space inside, but it's far better on the road with decent handling for a car of this size. The styling is pretty futuristic with touches of Ford's new edge design about it. And under the metalwork is the front wheel drive system, giving the benefit of the flat interior floor. The gear lever isn't cluttering up the floor either as it's on the dash, taking a leaf from the 806's book. So what could disappoint with the Previa? Well, you could really strain yourself getting the heavy seats out of their badly designed catches. And getting into the back is a bit of an undignified scramble if you're a big adult. But we like the Previa overall. It's got great road presence and it isn't bad value at all. OK, we're into the top three now, and we present to you the inventor of the MPV, Chrysler. Well, Renault would disagree with you there, Dave. But the original Chrysler minivan, as the Americans call it, was certainly one of the first to transport our colonial cousins around to their baseball matches and their massive shopping malls. Strange they call them vans, as that's a pretty negative description for UK drivers. Anyway, the latest Voyager looks great and is more practical than ever to own. Two doors open normally, but like the Previa, the back one's on a slide, which is so useful when your kids have a habit of hitting neighbourhood cars when they open the doors. Inside, all seven passengers have decent legroom and headroom, and there are so many cup holders and cubby holes, well, you could lose count. And with the extra space the Grand Voyager offers, you could even lose the odd child as well. 
That extra foot of space is essential for holidays when you need to share all the luggage and gubbins in from all those people that you're carrying. road you're powered along by an excellent 2.5 litre turbo diesel. We say forget the petrol variants because the 2 litre is far too weedy and the 3.4 litre simply gulps fuel. Now there is some body roll but what do you expect with such a huge machine? Overall we're very impressed by the package and unless you're really scared off by those very bad NCAP crash test results you ought to check the latest Voyager out. number two and yes it's fun time the fiat multiplier either makes you want to laugh or possibly cry the mutant dolphin look may appeal to your sense of wackiness or you may simply feel ashamed to be seen in it one thing's for sure though the fiat multiplier is a hell of a practical car it's three in the front and three in the back we first saw the concept of this at the Paris show years ago and they were toying with the idea of sticking the steering wheel in front of the middle front seat now, this would have really made it cheap to make for left and right-hand drive markets, but in the end, it was felt the driver would get fed up with shuffling into the centre seat every time. And it's not exactly a McLaren, is it? No, it certainly isn't. And I'm also not sure what the interior design is supposed to be about. The dash looks at first like a kid's games console with random vents and buttons, but it's actually extremely practical and ergonomic. The car's very easy to drive and three side by side in the front isn't the problem you may think it is because the seats are not exactly aligned together. But surely the multiplier is wider than most. Well, it is a little, but you honestly don't worry about it on the road. The cabin is very airy with those huge windows all around you. And even though you get a lot of luggage space in the back, the multiplier is actually the shortest of all of our full-sized MPVs in the top ten. The car's pretty lightweight, so a 1.6-litre petrol engine is perfectly adequate, although we like the refined 1.4 turbo diesel option here. The Fiat Multiplier is a wonderfully designed piece of kit. If only it didn't look so, well, unusual. But it's almost top score from our panel. It made number two in the chart. But before we reveal our number one, let's count down from ten to two of our full-sized MPVs. In at number ten, the Toyota Picnic. At number 9, the Mercedes V-Class. In at number 8, the Peugeot 806, the Citroen Synergy and the Fiat Ulysses. In at number 7, we've got the Hyundai Trajet. Number 6 is the Mitsubishi Space Wagon. And number 5 is Renault's Espace. And our number 4 is the new Toyota Previa. And number 3 is the Chrysler Voyager. Our number two is the Fiat Multipla. And so to our number one. And it's the wonderful Ford Galaxy. An obvious choice, maybe, but we think it's well deserved. Recently restyled to make it much more upmarket, the Galaxy is a spacious, comfortable MPV that really seems to have got people's needs satisfied. The driver will find the Galaxy as easy to drive as a Mondeo, with similar controls and feedback from the wheel and from the road. The dash and that wheel now look very Germanic and stylish, with better quality of plastics than used before. But this first position has to be a shared award. For the VW Charan and Seat Alhambra are virtually the same vehicle, all made in the same Portuguese factory. For example, the VW now features that sexy blue dash lighting you get on other VW models, and you can opt for a fantastic 204 BHP V6 engine. 
The Seat version, the Alhambra, gives you plenty of gear for the cash, but watch the depreciation if you're not going to hang on to it for a while. You don't buy an MPV unless you have to, and if I really had to, well I think I'd probably want something with a little more flair and innovation. But then trying to make an MPV exciting is rather like buying wellies to match your dinner suit. Pointless. And that's very much the message that they got when they put the car in front of a consumer clinic. They said they wanted conservative, they said they wanted nothing too striking and frightening, nothing too radical and no big changes. So that's exactly what they got. In case of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's it. It's been top of the pops for a long time and it'll probably continue being top of the pops. Nothing to change there. Don't expect it to be exciting, that's all. You're not going to have the thread of a lifetime. You've already had that. That's why you need an MPV. So, our number one choice in our top ten of full-sized MPVs goes to the Ford Galaxy, the VW Sharon and the Seat Alhambra. We'll see you next week for the top ten selling cars in the UK last year. Goodbye.